All right, Pete Hague said this here. Pete, uh, we're talking about the breakthrough that could be happening for a speaker. We're also talking about what's happening with the 28-year-old uh, Brian Kohlberger, who has been accused of killing those four Idaho uh, students. And we're also talking about what's happening on Sunday in El Paso. I've not really discussed, and by the way, good to see you. Good to see you. Interesting thing that you're doing here. I didn't even know, and I know you could. You have your clothes made for you, right? Uh, yeah, a lot of them, right. thanks, thanks to Fox. You have, and this is, this is a compliment, I'm just going to notice this. If you're not watching the stream, you have stripes that go across. Correct. And then when it comes to the sleeve, they go down. Yes. Have you noticed this, Allison? Have you? <clears throat> I, there aren't many shirts that have I've stripes never seen, that go never seen like horizontal. This. Yeah. I picked it out. I can have my guy talk to your guy. But, I mean, has this been done? Did someone did it? Someone say, wait, whoa, whoa, let's put the, put the brakes on this. Well, mostly they say horizontal stripes make you look wider. Yeah. But don't we want that? I want to look bigger and wider. Not in the Dan Marino before and after <laughs> shots that we watch with Weight Watchers. Uh, but, well, we'll see. I'm just saying it's something no worries. Thank you for your attention to detail. Right. Uh, so today you you have a busy day. Yeah, I got a lot going on, just like you. You got you doing Dan uh, Bongino show. Bongino right? show. I think Sean's show tonight. They're doing a live audience show. Nine o'clock. A lot happening with the speakers race. So we'll see what happens then. Yeah, we'll see what's happening. But I think you're doing something else. Are you doing something else? I'm doing a. I got a couple other private meetings. If you'd like me to open up my calendar yeah, go for ahead. your audience. Go ahead. All right, we've got a review of how the New Year's Eve show went. Really, uh, with a couple who, producers. Who's going to go over with that? With you that? know, Brian Tully, Megan right. Obano. A couple of producers here with a lot of sway. We're actually going to do an after-action report. We're doing an after-action to make sure next year's is even better than last year's. Right. I'm meeting with Steph Freeman. She produces uh, Cudlow Show. Oh, I'm going to be on that, too. Just to catch up. She's oh, this friend. is just, you just want to say hello. Just to say hello. Yeah, I'm probably going to go talk to Gavin Haddon, who produces Fox & Friends, just to say hello. Right. But they, but you know, they know you're up to something. When you walk in there. So I try to mix it up so that every once in a while I'm up to nothing. <laughs> so they think when I Got show no agenda. Up, right. No agenda. Then when you do go in and there. And every third time there's a big agenda item that I'm trying to push. Right. I remember the other day you came in. I think the headline was too much Will. That was it. Will Kane. Today, I'm not going to say that. Right. But Three you, visits the point from was now, made. Do you remember what I said about Will? Right. How many limit times his do word I... count, please? Right. And do you keep tallies still? Yes. That's right. Jennifer, my wife, your former producer right uh she at home tabulates every word stated on fox and friends weekend and the we biggest... go over it when i come home and we after action it and then right. i send in my complaints and the other thing is the big question is the contractions count as one word or two words we we go with two when the other person is speaking right it's because two words then it's two words when i when i do a contraction it's only one right is, is do you think will's too deep a thinker He's a deep thinker. Right. He's does an it, does analytical it make you think, mind. Yeah. Does it make you think when you answer, I didn't put enough thought into this, it and I fall on short? Right? It makes me wonder, why don't I think this deeply about right. things? Anything. Anything at all, <laughs> as much as right. Will Cain analyzes. Like, Will, Will said to me, and it, was, and it was so true, Like the fact that I'm still thinking about it, he said to me, when are you on the air? And I thought it was building towards a comedy. He goes, oh, I go, I'm doing the morning show, and I do the radio show, and I got to hit it too. And then he asked me to fill in on the five. I th he goes... Yeah, I can never do that. I go, he goes, because I need to t step back and think about things. So I go, wow. So <laughs> he didn't mean to insult me, but the more I thought about it, I, I'm going, he's like, he's saying that I'm not thinking. Yeah, I, I'm he's just doing. He effectively said the same thing to me. <laughs> really? We'll bring up like, like how hey, do you well, do? I want to get a pair of cowboy boots. He'll be like, wow, you got it. The history of cowboy boots. And I've thought about You don't just get them. Pointy toe, square toed, halfway toe, what shade, what leather. I'm like, yo, bro, I just I just want to get like walk into the store and grab a pair. Right. He th but that is such a Will. wonderful part of Will Kane. Right. He just dissects everything yeah. down to the minutia. It's like you could live your life wrong. I'm just going to tell you the right way to do it, <laughs> yeah. which is my way, by outlining how different your life is than mine. He had 20 resolutions for 2023. Did he write? That he listed, Are you kidding? He listed them on Were his Were they his personal or for his the country? personal uh, resolutions, 20 of them on Instagram, right. which I plan to keep a running tally. All year long of how he's doing. So uh, I noticed one question that Will got out of that he, and I just give him so much credit. So uh, they were talking about what happened with DeMar yep. and his, his injury on Monday and the, the whole country was praying for him. And Ainsley said, just tell me, what, you know, what your faith, how do you, how, what do you do with your faith? And he goes, Ainsley, I'm always looking to get better, but that's something I keep private. And I'm like, wow, that even in a Will Cain way. He kept it private in a classy way. He did a nice job. As if it's his fault. It's something he's working on. It's uh, it's true. He's very self reflection I'm getting. I'm having a self-reflective moment here that maybe you like Will Kane more than you like me. 
I would say this. I feel very... I don't feel like you're judging me as much as Will does. <laughs> like, I feel like I could be myself. No, you don't expect me to have a deep thought. Oh, so I'm a low expectation yeah. guy. Easy to be around, like an old shoe. Surfacy. Yeah. Surfacy. Like an old shoe that you're almost ready to get rid of. <laughs> right? Yep. <laughs> but you wear every day. You wear every day. Because? Because it's comfortable. And you know it's going to be there. Always delivers. The worst is when you break a shoelace and you realize the damage on the eyelet uh, on the other side and you say to yourself... How do I ever get this through this small hole? Well, and I don't have a 1-800-deliver-me-a-shoelace hotline. What do, what do guys like me who don't think that much? I just tie a knot on the end, and I say you're never going back through that hole. You mean you're a guy with military training? Yeah. You're like you're in Iraq, and you're saying to yourself, my lace broke. You can't say, uh, i got to call Amazon. I need a new eyelet. Right. You no. can't say that. You, you have... just tie that thing in a knot and <laughs> right. drive on. Which makes That's why we have the finest fighting force. <laughs> If you go to the Russians, wouldn't do that. The Russians would demand to go back. They would say, and their commanders would say, what, you want boots? Right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the rest of them and don't even have boots. For both feet? Both. <laughs> right. General, go ahead. I'm right behind you. That's, yes. that's what the Russians say, only in Russian. Absolutely. We've, can, they've, they've lost 18 generals. It's I think incredible. it's probably up to 23 now. And they're bringing back, like, really obese guys who are in retirement. Right. right? Generals now. And prisoners. And prisoners. Who aren't fighting for the actual Russian force. They're fighting for the Wagner mercenary force. The mercenary group. So it's if Blackwater, now no longer existent, was leading us in Afghanistan and Iraq. It was kind of the case at some <laughs> points. <laughs> they did have some contractors. But they we had a lot of contractors at one point. Right, but, in, but they would stay to fight with you and decide, like, hey, I got a better deal. I'm going to Nambia. So, like, you know, they were Americans. They were. And very committed vets, combat vets. I don't know how we got here. I'm not but sure. But if I needed Will Kane to be a mercenary force for you and I, he would be there for us. Nope, he'd think about it. And he'd go, <laughs> let, me, let me see what that means. So here What's is, the, dental plan? The, the audio's not great, but it sets the table. Kevin McCarthy on the chance of him being speaker today. Cut one. It has undercut your potential power to speak. I mean, has, it cut, <laughs> has it undercut the power of all the other speakers? But it was used over John so Boehner. So why would it cut the power? I'm not I'm not since 1859. I mean, doesn't that inherently mean that you would be a weaker speaker? No. Explain. No. It would only be a weaker speaker if I was a freedom. Who was that last what word? What was that last yeah, word? That last word was so good. Oh, afraid. Afraid. Right. I, it sounds like concessions are being made. Sounds like I'd be surprised if he got it today. It sounds like today might be a whittling down of the 10 or 12 who are part of the 20 whose whose resistance are not as personal as that core five or six, because it seems like he's meeting a lot of the concessions. I will say this. It feels like a lot of the concessions are a return to the way the House used to operate right. before a lot of the power was consolidated in the speaker's gavel. And in that sense, if we can get back to some regular order where there's transparency on bills, that's a good thing. So I'm not as pessimistic or disheartened by the fact that there's multiple ballots. Let it go on. I, I, it doesn't bother me. But ultimately, they're going to need to coalesce. We I need think a house. Kevin McCarthy. We do need a house. It's not like it's even functioning with you. We don't need Unclear. a house? Clear. No. Right, I, more I, bad ideas, more bad bills being passed out of Washington, D.C.? Well, they're not all bad. I mean, I would like to see Mike uh, McCall... Head of foreign relations. I want to see, uh, I want to see uh, Michael Waltz in charge of armed I services. I do too, but they're all going to die in the Senate, and they're all going to be vetoed by Joe Biden. So nothing policy wise is actually going to change. You can create a contrast, and you've had the power of the purse, so you have real leverage there. To me, it's the investigations of what the committees can do when they have those gavels. If that happens tomorrow, great. If it happens two weeks from now. That's fine. We've been waiting two right. years for this. We so, can wait so, another couple so weeks. Pete, I thought uh, we, uh, two days ago, I said it's going to go 19, it's going to go 17, it's going to go 12, and then we're going to see if we can get below seven. But then I heard this with Bill Hammer yesterday. I think there is an agreement. Um, I think it's uh, a reasonable agreement. And I think what's uh, holding it up right now is there, there's sort of a blood oath between the 20 that they won't move until they're all ready to move. And so even though uh, 9, 10, 11 of them may agree to this uh, uh, compromise that's been reached, I don't think that they will uh, all move until uh, they're all ready to move. Interesting. I mean, you alluded to that this morning as well. Congressman Buck. That could be the case. I mean, hey, you, you. So far, it looks like it's a case. It looks because like and it may be the case again today. I just don't know. Point will be made. I have the same frustrations with the Uniparty that oftentimes mm -hmm. is the case in Washington, D.C. They see Kevin McCarthy as a reflection of that. 
I think he'll govern more conservative than most people think, likely because of this process, because of Trump, because of the pressure, and because you better create that contrast considering what the Senate and White House are doing right now. I, I'm just not worried. This is a lot of process and a lot of cable news, but ultimately – it's a good thing when parties have it out over what the future of that party should be, and people who get comfortable where they are are made uncomfortable. I'm okay with that. I still think it ends with Kevin McCarthy as the speaker. I hope so. I, and one thing, I guess, they made a strategic error. He said, I'm not giving in anymore, and I have earned it. I deserve it. That was the exact opposite that. of what the 19 wanted to hear. But every once in a while, I just got to jar, my, remind myself, we're talking about one party. I keep thinking to myself, this is, keep going to remind myself, it's not the squad. You're not going against Nancy Pelosi. This, these are people that you've always wore the same jersey with. So it just shows you people, what they're trying to do on other channels and in uh, almost every other nat, uh, printed page is link January 6th, which today is, and the chaos in the House, saying Republicans are coming apart of the scenes. Trump's party and power is falling apart. And they're saying the six was the culmination, and these people are that that small group is destroying the house right now. I mean, that's nonsense. They want to tie anything they can to January sixth, but I think it's fair to acknowledge there is a real reckoning going on inside the Republican Party with real grassroots. Call them MAGA, call them ultra MAGA, call them conservative, call them Freedom Caucus, whatever you want. Completely dissatisfied with the status quo. Base of which many of the members of the Republican Party still are. You look at the condition of our country, you say getting along to go along the same way we did business is not going to work when you're $30 trillion in debt and your border's wide open. We better be willing to play real hardball. And their point to Kevin McCarthy is, are you ready to play hardball or are you not? And, and they're all upset about the omnibus. Okay, but don't think for a second Kevin McCarthy was for the omnibus. But that's Mitch, that's Mitch McConnell's problem. Right, but they keep saying, well, the swamp, and okay, all right. Swamp, the guy who tried to drain the swamp said, vote for Kevin McCarthy. His name is President Trump. And Boebert said, well, yeah, that's too bad. He's my favorite president, but he's wrong. And Gates says he's not great at HR. He doesn't pick the best people. I, I like Gates' nomination of Donald Trump, though. I would like him to be the Speaker On of the January House. 6th. I'm, I don't care what day it is. But it is. It was January 5th when It he is said January 6th. Fine. Make him the Speaker of the House today. Let him lead the impeachment proceedings against Mayorkas. I would love it. It's not going to happen. That's the big problem of the holdouts is they don't have a candidate they could ultimately coalesce around. Right. So they can resist, understandably so, for the reasons they've stated. But they're still beholden. And, and I, I don't like hearing the McCarthy defenders say, well, maybe it's time to cut deals with Democrats. That would be the worst idea. I, I think that's only to create leverage in negotiations with the other side as well. Yeah, Hakeem know. Jeffries said, no, just let them worry. He didn't even play the game. Why he would said, you yeah. play the game? Right. But he's, but I, if I was him, if uh, I would say, hey, guys, I'm here. Obviously, you got a problem. Let's do a deal. If I'm Hakeem Jeffries. But he said, listen, let them work it out. But they know that's a – Republicans know that's a political death sentence if you cut a deal with the Democrats to get the majority. I mean, talk about being primary. You're – you are confirming that you are the uniparty. So here's here's what Trey Gowdy said. He is optimistic. Cut nine. I think progress is being made. Uh, I, I, I hope I'm not um, uncharacteristically optimistic in saying that. I mean, my friends tell me they're actually talking right now. So you got to whittle the 20 down. Look, Brett, the other night, four Republicans voted with Democrats on the motion to adjourn. You can just forget about those four. If you really are gonna side with the Democrats and allow this spectacle to play out on primetime television, then you're not interested in what's best for the Republican Party. But that leaves 16, and I think Kevin's trying to pick them off one by one. And do you know what his point was there? His point was you have to get the vote to adjourn. You can't just stop voting. Yep. And the fact that Republicans were saying keep voting when you knew it was just going to be the same result again, they wanted to adjourn. They expect the Democrats to taunt them with it, but they have more numbers. So if you vote not to adjourn, you can't say you're serious about doing uh, getting things done as Trey Gowdy. Or friend. they're serious about not wanting Kevin McCarthy. I know we've done 12 ballots. I, I was just watching America's Newsroom when I came up here. They showed the historical precedent of other Congresses much further back. 36 ballots, 72 ballots, over 100 ballots. This, we could have that kind of scenario where it, the heels are dug in and one of them's waiting for the other side to blink. And they don't. I don't think we should write off the possibility that we're here a week from now talking about the 34th ballot. All right. So are you taping the show, Allison? Good. Uh, because I'm going to say it's going to end today. You're saying it's ending today. I'm saying it's ending today. I'm saying there's no chance it ends today. You're still taping, Allison? 
Okay. Excellent. We're going to be able to I'm play gonna this I'm going to be back guy. here on Friday right. next week because I'm, I'm in for Steve on Friday next okay. week as well. We shall play that clip, and I will bet you – I was going to bet you Bitcoin, but it's not worth anything anymore, so yeah. I, I can't do that. I'll just a friendly bet that they're still voting by Friday of next week. Lunch after the show, uh, after – uh, at After Del Frisco's, radio, at Del Frisco's, lunch at Del Frisco's, loser pays at almost all of it, including almost including the it. tip. My drinks too, right? Your drink. Well, that's tough. No one could actually pay for your drinks. <laughs> no. That's why you have a tab. That's right. Exactly right. So you're looking just exactly to chip right. away at it, Pete. <laughs> yes, every time. I've got Back in a moment. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.